Majorit was founded in 1961 by Emile Veron of the family that also created Norev, which is actually the Veron family name spelt backwards. Initially, model railways and accessories were made and the firm was known as Railroute. By 1964, the first cars came to market and in 1967, the name was changed to Majorette, which means cheerleader in French. Majorette became the main French manufacturer of matchbox size miniature vehicles. The company soon became the largest French toy car manufacturer. The main competition was Matchbox, but also German Siku and later Japanese Tamika. Though French cars like Peugeot and Renault were emphasised, other licensed marks included European brands and North American vehicles from GM, Ford and Chrysler. Japanese Nissan and Toyota were also represented. Over the years, Majorette has adapted to increasing competition, with mixed results. The first line was the 100 series of roughly 3-inch vehicles. Then the 200 series of the same size replaced it around 1970, and it was very successful as Majorette moved into many world markets. 100 and 200 series cars and trucks were much like Matchbox, though the focus was on French vehicles. Some of the castings were rather bulky and thick in style when compared to Matchbox, Siku or Tamika. Though realism and detail were sometimes lacking, by the early 1970s Majorette established a reputation of making quality, heavy vehicles, incorporating features like opening doors and hoods, translucent plastic parts and sprung suspension systems. In the 1980s, Majorette emphasised the cars as toys, including brighter paints, large tampo printings and slightly exaggerated bodies. The strategy was a success, and even if the cars lost some realism, they had an attractive solidness and style compared to the competition. In the late 1970s to early 1980s, the Brazilian toy firm Imbrima manufactured Majorette models under licence. By producing locally, Majorette benefited by avoiding duties on importing from France. Around the same time, Kiko also reached an agreement with Majorette to produce approximately 15 Majorette models in Brazil, at a factory in Rio de Janeiro. Again, as with Imbrima, local colour schemes and liveries were used. Kiko models included the Datsun 240Z, the VW T2, Citroën Diane and the Renault 4. At the end of 1980, Majorette purchased revered die-cast producer Salido. About the same time, the Portuguese company Novacar was also purchased and Majorette production commenced in Portugal. Besides their important domestic presence, Majorette relies heavily on commercial sales to foreign markets. In 1982, Majorette USA was established in Miami, Florida, but that extension was relatively short-lived as Majorettes weren't heavily retailed in the US throughout the 90s and the 2000s. The popular 300 series of cars with trailers and boats, as well as semi-articulated trucks, dated from the mid-1970s. Some examples were the Volkswagen Beetle towing kayaks on a trailer, the Renault Michelin canvas top trailer tractor in blue and yellow from the 1980s, or the Chevy pickup truck hauling a luxurious yacht. Buses like the traditional London Double Decker were also produced in the 300 series in the mid-1980s. Similar to Matchbox, Budgie or Siku, the standard series of cars was about 1 in 64, but the scale was mainly aligned to 3 inches. Other manufacturers like Triang's Spot On maintained precise scale across all vehicles, which often was a problem when considering uniform packaging techniques. Scale varied whether a Majorette vehicle was a small mini car, like the cutely done Renault Twingo, or the Volvo Yoplait truck, all being anchored to the 2.5 inch to 3 inch size. During the 1980s, many larger cars, trucks, farm and construction vehicles were introduced in the 4 to 6 inch size. These varied from the Lincoln limousine to farm tractors and trailers to cement mixers. All were packaged in the same eye-catching red packaging. Among these were the 600 series of semi-tractor trucks. One line of cars was known as the Sonic Flashers. These were standard size majorettes that, when pushed down on, produced a siren blare with flashing lights. These came in military, police, fire and ambulance versions. These vehicles had durable electronics, with batteries sometimes lasting an entire decade before losing power. Today Majorette light and sound vehicles fill this gap, though they're larger with pull-back wind-up motors. 
Another line based on the 200 series were the road eaters. Regular cars were offered with tampo printing of various food companies' products pad printed on them, such as Willy Wonka Gobstoppers or Nerds, but also Campbell's, Swanson's, Coca-Cola, or even Pepsi logos. Food coupons for the advertised products were often included with the vehicles. During the 80s and 90s, Majorette made playsets called Majo kits. These came with plastic pavement pieces that locked together to form the streets of a town. Pieces were straight, in a corner, out a corner, and others that could be used as parking spaces. Each piece had at least one hole on it where objects such as traffic signs, street lights, parking meters, rubbish bins, flowers, telephone booths, and even buildings could be inserted. Some sets would include one or more majorette vehicles, and others included figurines for added play value. Although mainly a die-cast car and truck producer, Majorette has had a plane and helicopter line to compete with Matchbox Skybusters. The Majorette airplane and helicopter line was expanded in 2013 to include such airlines as Air Mauritius and Tui Fly, along with 11 others and 5 fictitious ones. The 1990s brought financial troubles and Majorette began to retreat from the US market. The period had a tremendous impact on quality. In 1992, bankruptcy was followed by a takeover by Ideal Loisir, and most Majorette production was relocated to Thailand, although one exception was the Nova Car series that was still made in Portugal. At this time, Majorettes began to lose the proud and familiar Made in France on their bases and on their packaging. Actually, the shiny silver metal base itself gradually disappeared from the new models, replaced by an ordinary black plastic base, a cost-saving solution common in many toy brands. The loss was not only visual or tactile, Majorettes lost their characteristic weight and solid feel. After Majorette's parent company Ideal Loisir was purchased, batches of better castings have been introduced, as well as an image facelift that includes a modified logo, and a toning down of the bright look of the 1980s and 90s. This was in touch with the automobile industry's trend for using plainer, metallic paints. Majorette was purchased by Smoby in 2003, but Smoby went bankrupt and it was purchased by Smeba Dickey, makers of Dickey Toys. The Majorette 200 line continues to be made in Thailand, and the newer models are made in China. The distribution of Majorette via major retailers has been limited mainly to Europe, South America, and Asia. The Majo Team series offers vehicles in different sizes, in different themes, and is reminiscent of offerings during the 1990s. Some of the castings, such as the 1980 Chevrolet four-door Impala, have been made continuously since the mid-1980s. Lastly, a new line of Ecotech cars features electric, hybrid, and other green and environmentally friendly vehicles. Around 2010, similar to Hot Wheels, Majorette moved into larger sized plastic models. One example was the 1 in 20 Kids Mate Mini Cooper. It's very detailed and complete with all opening features, but all in plastic in a package with bright red colours. The Majorette factory in Thailand was almost completely destroyed by heavy floods in the fall of 2011. Production at this facility resumed in 2012, with most of the 470 employees keeping their jobs. Recently, Majorette has been launching some cars from the Vision Gran Turismo lineup from Gran Turismo. Around 2017, Majorette became more visible in the United States, with new lines appearing in several retail stores like Toys R Us. With Toys R Us going out of business in 2018, however, much of that visibility disappeared. A big thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. To get early advert-free access to new videos or to appear in the credits, please consider supporting me using the Patreon link below from just $1 or 80p a month and hit that subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.